You know, weekend wankers, with all this gloomy, cold winter weather, I've got me a bad old case of the blues. Hello kids and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Way Shop here with your good pal Uncle Ben. Now featuring 100% more flannel. Flannel. Every great guitar player from Joe Bonamassa to Ingui Mouse Meat has a handful of hot blues licks in their back pocket that they can bust out on you at any old time. This week on the show I'm going to teach you a classic blues lick that I first heard from Stevie Ray Vaughan but he probably picked it up from Albert King or somebody like that and it's then since spread to guys like Bonamassa and Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Everybody. This is one of those kind of licks that everybody plays. I've heard John Mayer play this lick. So it's one of those that's really, really good to have. It shows you how you can get out of the straight up minor pentatonic kind of box position and into what we kind of affectionately call the BB box anytime you're playing in a blues kind of solo thing. It's in the neighborhood of C minor, but you could easily put it into any key to suit your bidding. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. <laughs> And as always, kids, you can find a full bluesy tab on my Instagram page. So be sure to go over to Instagram and find Ben Eller Guitars. Search out the tab for this week's lick, learn how to play it, and upload a video of yourself bluesing your way through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. So I was playing this over at Blues and C, so I was using the C minor pentatonic scale, which is C, E flat, F, G, and B flat. Uh, you start off with this lick kind of in the typical sort of box position, which if you don't know it, goes like this. It's two notes on every string, you gotta play it from low to high here. So starting from the low E, you play 8 and 11. A string here, you're gonna have 8 and 10. D string 8 and 10. G string 8 and 10. B string 8 and 11. And high E string 8 and 11. Although we really only use the top three strings here, it's still good to know the rest of that scale pattern. As far as context goes, you usually hear guys like Steve Ray Vaughan play this lick as they're coming from the four chord back to the one chord. Now that might just be a bunch of gibberish to some of you guys, but think of it this way. If you're playing a blues, right, it starts off in C, then it drops straight down to the four chord, F, then it goes straight back up to C, now's the time to play the lick right there. It's not really a rule or anything like that, but that's just typically where you hear guys put this. It's just a great way to return back to that one chord and establish that tonality. So where this lick is starting off here is by barring the top two strings, the B string and the high E string, down here at the eighth position. So right now I'm just holding those two down. Notice also though I have the tip of my pointer finger slightly touching the G. We're going to start off by bending the G, and if you don't have that muting going on, then when you release the G, it'll twang out on you like that, which you don't want. So you want to position your pointer finger so that it's not uh, it's not only just barring, but also slightly touching the G. That way when you release the G, it has somewhere to land on, you know? So where you start off is with the 10th fret on the G string right here. And I'm going to hit that and give it a whole step bend. Notice I use two fingers to make that bend a lot easier. Then I hit the B string, then I hit the high E string that I'm already barring. So you'll notice that I release the bend as soon as I hit the B string. So you don't want to hear them ringing together like that. That's not exactly what you're going for. So bend it, let it go as soon as you hit the B. Next what you're going to do is you're going to play the 11th fret on the B string and slide up a whole step to the 13th fret. Now at this point we're kind of out of that uh, minor pentatonic position that we started off in. We're kind of wandering into unfamiliar territory. But I want to put it out there that this note that we slid up to it's exactly the same note that was right here on the high E string. Remember, a scale isn't a scale pattern. A scale is a specific set of notes. And like I said, in this particular case, it's C and E flat, and F and G and B flat and C. So that means I can play any C on the neck, or any B flat on the neck, or any G on the neck, or whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter that it's outside of the box pattern. That's something that confuses a lot of beginner guitarists. They can't figure out why I'm playing these notes outside of this box. It's like, well, it's actually the same notes that were in the box, just in a different location. So far, we've got this. Now, this lands us up here in what a lot of people call the BB box, 
which was actually named after the BB-8 droid from the new Star Wars film. It's kind of like this. If we're in C, the BB box goes uh, 12th fret on the G, 11th fret B, 13th fret B, 11th fret high E, and 13th fret high E. And, you know, the cool thing is, is anytime you're using this, you can get up here in this BB box, hog around on that for a while, and do some really great soloing. So when we do this little slide in here, it's just an excuse to put us inside of that box. So now that I'm up in BB's box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that 13th fret B two times, followed by the high E on 11, then back to the 13th fret B. Again, that note right there is significant because that's the root note of the scale. The root note's a C, that's a C as well. So that's a good note to kind of uh, land on repeatedly. So we did this. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the B string on 13 two more times. Back to the 11 on high E. 13th fret high E and give it a whole step bend. And then give it another whole step bend. That was two in a row. Notice that you didn't hear the bends coming up and down like that. You only heard the bend go up. Now how I'm achieving that is whenever I get the bend to the top, I then choke it with the pick. That way I can let it down silently. Notice how the pick is coming into contact with the string, choking the note out, and then just letting her down, right? Otherwise, it's like this. Sounds disgusting. So you got to get good at this sort of upstroke choking thing. You could probably do it with a downstroke, but I've always done it with an up. So there's that. So after you do your two bends on that 13th fret high E, what you're going to do is just to play the plain unbent 13th high E, 11th fret high E, and the 13th fret B. Again, wailing on that root note. And then lastly, this is one of those classic kind of closing out licks right here. Got to play the 11th fret high E, 13th fret B, 12th fret on the G. This is just a, a C minor triad, actually. And then lastly, playing this B flat note, 11th fret on the B string. That's a turnaround you hear Stevie do in like every other song, especially a slow song uh, like Texas Flood or something like that. He's always shutting it down with that lick right there. If you want to add some extra sass on that last little turnaround there, whenever you play that 11th fret high E, which would be the minor third of the scale, one thing that guys really like to do in blues, Stevie especially, is to give that note a slight bend. Notice I wasn't bending a half step or a whole step or anything like that. It's just like a quarter step, just a little teeny tiny microtonal bend. Something you could do to add some extra sass to any blues lick. All right, so in summary, we started off with our kind of minor pentatonic position lick, slid into the BB box, we did this little guy. Then we did pretty much the same notes again, did our two bends, and then the little turnaround. So there you go, guys, a classic blues lick that you can unleash on your rivals who may oppose you. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars for all my shenanigans and antics. Also, if you'd like to book some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, you can drop me a message. BenEllerGuitars at gmail.com is my email address. I'll uh, read your message and get back to you as soon as I can. We'll talk about rates and times and all that other good stuff to get you set up and get learned. Thanks again to you guys. Stay tuned for some cool stuff coming up next week. Cheers.